Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the 2024 Honda Ridgeline in the new Trail Sport trim. This is the most unique midsize pickup truck in the entire segment with some class exclusives. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why you may wanna consider this truck your next truck. Stay tuned. It is springtime here in East Texas, and you know what that means? The pollening is happening. Thanks to our friends at carcover.com, we were able to get a custom perfect fit car cover for my 2013 Chevy Cruze. They know it's important to keep your car protected, and what they sent me was their Gold Shield 5L car cover, which beats all its competitors for many reasons. It resists all types of extreme weather conditions, such as snow, and is 100% waterproof and water resistant. This is the ultimate car care cover for storing your vehicle and protecting it while outside. The soft fleece lining is sure to protect your vehicle's paint and finish while it is underneath. And this car cover was so simple to install, I was able to do it myself for the very first time in under 15 minutes. It comes with a couple clips for the front and the back and a lockable cable to secure it across the middle. So this car cover is not going anywhere and it will help me keep all that pollen out here in the springtime in East Texas. Huge thanks to carcover.com for providing us with this Gold Shield 5L cover for my Chevy Cruze. You can get one for yourself. Simply follow the link down in the description below and enter promo code GT Garage Talk in the coupon field at checkout for a discount off your first order. First things first, gearheads, I want to thank Honda for bringing us this 2024 Honda Ridgeline in the new Trail Sport trim to review for you here on the channel. We've been living with it for a week, and not only do we have this video here, but we have our family review coming out later where we talk about how this pickup truck fits our family. But as per usual, while I've got the hood open, we can talk about what motivates this thing. And that is one of the very unique features of this vehicle. First of all, it's a naturally aspirated V6. It is one of three naturally aspirated V6s in the midsize pickup truck segment. The other two being the Jeep Gladiator, and the Nissan Frontier, of which we've tested both. We've liked both of them fairly well. And this is also, as you can tell by the engine arrangement, a front wheel drive based V6. Yes, all Ridgelines are all wheel drive, but this one you can see is transversely mounted where most of the power does go to the front wheels, but it can send up to 70% to the back wheels. We'll talk more about that later. There is one other midsize pickup truck that does offer a V6, and that is the new Ford Ranger, but those come in turbocharged fashion. This one, being a naturally aspirated V6, doesn't get the best fuel economy, nor does it produce the best power in the class. It makes a decent 280 horsepower and a decent 262 pound-feet of torque, made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission, and as mentioned, all Ridgelines are all-wheel drive using Honda's intelligent variable torque management system that can, of course, send up to 70% of torque to the rear wheel, rear wheels, and it can send up to 100% of that to the wheel with uh, grip and with traction. So that being said, yes, it is a capable pickup truck, even if it is front wheel drive biased, up to 70% of the power can go to one rear wheel. Also the fuel economy numbers, uh, not the best in the segment, 18 city, 23 highway, 20 combined. It definitely falls short in both power and efficiency to many of the turbo fours coming out in the segment from everybody from Toyota, to GM, to yes, Ford. As we close the hood, we can talk about how this is, yes, based off of the last generation Honda Pilot. No, we did not get an updated one for 2024. We do expect an updated both Ridgeline and Passport SUV crossover coming from Honda very soon based off of that new Pilot platform. 
but for 2024, we make do with essentially a carryover in the grand scheme of things. There have been a few modifications and as mentioned, this new trail sport trim. Otherwise, it is very similar to the last Ridgeline that we sampled here on the channel. Very similar design language up front, very boxy updated styling. Uh, and it, an interesting look all the way around. I'll get my words out here in a second. You can see we get LED running lights and LED headlights, LED fog lights down very low, and very interesting to me, very low incandescent turn signals. The placement of these just kind of blows my mind, especially in what is considered a pickup truck. It is a, almost too low, almost comically low, how uh, Honda has placed these on the vehicle. You would expect them somewhere up in the headlight housing, but no, we get them down here. They are amber, and they are not uh, a dual function of that LED running light, but it just seems so oddly placed way down low here. We do get some air curtain pass through here for some better aerodynamics. But as I mentioned earlier, this doesn't get the best fuel economy in the segment, uh, giving way to those turbo fours that are making their, themselves so popular in this midsize segment. As we come around to the side, you can see we get some black lower cladding on this, not as aggressive as the HPD version that we had a couple years ago, but still a very nice, very rugged look. This is a trail sport specific color, one of two trail sport specific colors that you can only get on the new Trail Sport model. And then as I pull in here, we get Trail Sport specific wheels and tires. I really like these kind of dark pewter finished wheels uh, with these very chunky five spoke uh, design. It looks very rugged, very nice. Uh, perhaps my favorite wheel on the Ridgeline. I really like the bronze ones that we sampled last time. You can see they're wrapped in General Grabber all-terrain tires. So very nice all-terrain, very aggressive pattern on them. They are 245 60 R18 inch General Grabber tires wrapped around these 18 inch wheels. All around, very nice. And while we're talking about wheels, tires, we can talk about the suspension. This is a four wheel independent suspension because this is, again, a unibody based pickup truck. Front wheel drive, unibody based. Yes, most people claim that this isn't a real truck because it's not a body on frame and it is front wheel drive based, but this has spawned a couple of competitors already and I could foresee many more coming if fuel and cafe standards uh, keep getting more and more stringent. Of course, I am talking about the Hyundai, Hyundai Santa Cruz and the Ford Maverick. Neither of those are really direct competitors because this is a much bigger platform overall than those two compacts and subcompacts, but this is still a very nice overall package. And with that independent suspension, with a unibody uh, design architecture, this is a very comfortable vehicle on the road. We'll talk more about that when we get to driving it. As we come around to the side here, this is where its resemblance to the last generation Pilot really makes itself known. You can see the cabin of it really does mimic the same design lines of the Pilot because it shares a lot of body components uh, from that B pillar forward. From the B pillar back, we get some more unique elements, unique rear door, and of course, yes, the bed. As we come back to the bed, there is a lot of unique stuff to this one, but for 2024, I do want to call out how we get Ridgeline stamped into the tailgate here, and we have this contrasting black. I really like that a lot. We also get dual exit rear exhaust ports on this one, which I think is a really nice touch. Again, you're not going to be rock crawling in this one since it is a unibody based platform. Uh, so I, I'm not really too worried about approach, breakover, and departure angles, which I can go ahead and go over with you. They're nice, but not exactly class competitive. I'll compare these to the Nissan Frontier, which we recently tested in the Pro 4X. The ground clearance on this is 7.64 inches of ground clearance compared to that Nissan's 9.5. Approach angle is 20.4 degrees compared to the Nissan's 32.3. The departure and breakover are both 19.6 on this Ridgeline. That is the same breakover angle as the uh, shorter body on frame Frontier, but a worse uh, departure angle than that Frontier, which is north of 20 degrees. Again, you're really not going to be doing a lot of rock crawling in this. This is more of a get you to the trail kind of vehicle. And we'll talk more about that as we open uh, the bed up. 
and get into it because uh, this is a very unique tailgate. First of all, it's not damped, so it'll just drop down on you. And it is rather on the heavy side. And again, we'll get to that here in just a second. But you can see we've got uh, textured material both in the bed and on the back of the tailgate itself. Honda really markets this uh, heavily with their own brand of products back here in the bed, being that they make some dirt bikes. You can fit a couple of Honda dirt bikes back in here, and you can see we've got all sorts of cleats and tie downs uh, to put dirt bikes back in the back. Being that they make both the dirt bikes and the pickup trucks, you know they've worked together uh, to make sure that those work very nicely together. But some of the very exclusive, class exclusive things of this bed come when you actually close this and you look down here on the bumper, we have the word release here. You grab, there's a handle just underneath, and now we have access right to the back of the pickup bed uh, without having to reach over a tailgate. I really like how shallow uh, the bed is when it comes to overall reach in height. So if you're coming to the side of it, I'm 5'10", you can easily reach in and grab something. Though it does minimize the overall cargo carrying capacity, the payload on this vehicle is just over 15,000 pounds, which is fairly class competitive. And there is a 33.9 cubic foot of uh, bed space as this one currently is. Yes, the trend is to make bigger uh, bed rails, bed sides to fit more cargo in here presumably, but you are still limited by your payload rating. Again, with this one being just over 1,500 pounds, I'd say it is a very good payload capacity on this one, but it gets even more unique because right here we've got a release that is uh, based on the proximity key. So you can just have your key in your pocket close to you and you get 7.3 cubic feet of storage space in this in-bed trunk which is weather sealed. You can see here it is fully rather weather sealed and we put that to the test. We were rained on very heavily on an impromptu trip to the DFW Metroplex and we had our luggage in here as it was storming outside and it stayed bone dry in here. That was very much appreciated. You can see we do have a drain plug in here that you can uh, pull out and you can see that goes directly down to the ground below. So you can make this a cooler if you want to. There are different dividers in here, so you can divide this in many different ways. We do get a temporary spare in here, though with its placement, if you had a lot of cargo or payload in here that was loose, like if you just had a bunch of dirt poured in the back, getting to that spare is going to be a problem. So really is use case scenario how you plan on using it but a very unique storage situation here made possible by the fact that this is a unibody design and uh, that we've got this uh, very unique tailgate that opens in two different directions talking about pickup truck things another thing i really like that honda does is coming back here to the hitch receiver you get your towing information right next to the receiver unlike other pickup truck manufacturers who put it in the driver's door jam it is all right here for you max pay our max towing on this is just about or actually it is right at 5,000 pounds, which is fairly class competitive. We're seeing six and 7,000 pounds uh, respectively on some of the newer vehicles with the turbo fours, but this is still a very com competent uh, towing when it comes to the tow ratings here on paper. As we come to the side of the vehicle, I do want to talk about the key before we get in. I like Honda's proximity keys. They are very small, compact, very easy to slide into your pocket or purse, and they are numbered. So you can see this one is driver one. That is tied to the driver's seat memory, position one, and will automatically reassume that position each and every time. You can see on the back here, we've got lock, unlock, remote start, and a panic button. And you can also release a physical key right here uh, to get into the vehicle if necessary. Otherwise, you can just keep that in your pocket or your purse and walk up to the front doors only and get into it. This also works on that embed trunk that I showed you. In fact, to test to see if that was really lockable, I had to give the key to my wife, uh, tell her to lock it, and then try and get into that embed trunk myself. 
as we look at the doors, Honda does in vehicle storage very nicely. You can see we have one, two, three tiers of storage here with a cup holder built in. Lots of storage options here in the door itself. Auto uh, front windows, but not back windows. Your lockout controls right there. Uh, your two person memory controls right there. Your mirror controls are actually on the dash next to this. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we've got some buttons here for your parking sensors, lane keep and things like that. As we look down to the driver's seat, you can see we have a multi-way positional driver's seat with lumbar. So two-way lumbar on the back, which is nice. The Trail Sport models get these black leather with the orange Trail Sport embroidery and contrasting stitching, which looks really nice and helps break up the otherwise fairly dark interior we're actually going to pop in and get out of all the cold wind and breeze my goodness it feels a whole lot better in here you can see the honda logo come to life right there we're actually going to go ahead and put our foot on the brake and start this one up Now, Honda does a thing here where they actually give you uh, an analog speedometer and a digital screen over here. We have a seven inch helper screen doing all the heavy lifting on this side, but a fully analog speedometer. And then we get a nine inch infotainment screen that is very much in line with the Nissan Frontier that we recently tested, although configured just a little bit differently and does lag behind some of the newer competitors. Again, you're going to hear that a lot. This is lagging behind but i'm very much looking forward to uh, what honda does for an updated version otherwise we get an updated steering wheel over the last one that we saw you can see the controls here help adjust through different things on uh, the digital helper screen on this side uh, from fuel uh, warnings and traction management we'll go ahead and roll over to the traction management there we go all-wheel drive torque distribution and then over here you can see we have heated steering wheel lane keep and your gap adjustment for your uh, your adjustable um, automatic uh, cruise control there we go i'll get the words out nine inch wireless apple uh, carplay infotainment system and android auto really like that for the most part it's worked really well for us it's glitched a couple times both on holly and myself but otherwise no real big hiccups and our time with it just a couple of glitches that's all i can speak to at this moment very interesting and unique for the segment tri-zone climate so one for the driver, one for the passenger, one for the rear seats, and all that is controlled up here. You just hit that rear button right there, and you can control exactly what that is set to. That is a very nice touch. You won't see that in any other midsize pickup truck in the segment. Very nice. We get some nice materials up here, although uh, I feel like they're kind of lagging behind some of the other offerings just in their unique design. I do like what Chevy and GMC are doing, even if that GMC kind of creaked on us more than we'd really like to. You can see more storage in the door over here. We do have a nice glove box, but much like the tailgate, it's not damped, so it just drops down on you. We get a little bit of storage here, a little bit of storage here with a Qi wireless charger. That does not work great, but you have a USB-C and a USB-A port, as well as a cigarette lighter style outlet right there as well. These aren't really deep enough to put a phone. Uh, I haven't tried putting it in sideways, uh, but yeah, it's just too tight of a fit for my iPhone 14 Pro Max. So not gonna go in there all the way, but you can see I can put it there and charge it on the Qi wireless charger. We do have heated front seats. They do remember where they were set last time the vehicle was uh, turned off and back on. Cup holders, Ford and aft. I, I really wish manufacturers would get away from this. Chevy is slowly getting away from the push button controls. The 2025 versions of the Tahoes and Suburbans are getting away from their push button transmission controls. I, I wish Honda would do the same. This isn't my favorite. It doesn't really save you any additional uh, space in the center console you just don't have the handle kind of raised up here for i guess hitting your stanley tumbler on as you go to and from the cup holder just it's not my favorite i, I could get over it but it's not my favorite you have different drive modes here you can see normal snow mud and sand you just push and cycle through all of them right there and then we have a button here to defeat the engine start stop system again nice cup holders there very nice center console very wide very deep very spacious and roomy and you can see we've got this rubberized lip right here so if you want to put change or sunscreen or microphones whatever you want to put right here is a nice place to store it 
Uh, very nice. And additional storage, we've got some sunglass storage right here. Unlike the Pilot, we don't get a convex mirror here. I feel like that's just a waste. They could have put it there because it's still nice to even see Tucker back behind us, even though he's like right back behind us. Nothing really fancy on the rear view mirror. It is self-dimming, which you can turn off with this button right here. The home link buttons are built into it as well. It is nice. You can see the view out is fairly spacious, uh, but it is compromised just a little from the headrest there. We have a standard size sunroof here with a manually sliding shade. You can see me at 5'10". I've got plenty of room in here. Fairly comfortable seats. I've got no complaints here. Uh, we've taken this to and from Dallas. It has been a comfortable ride for us. If you've liked the last generation Pilot or the current generation Ridgeline, I think you'll be very happy uh, with this vehicle. We also have a manually uh, tilt and telescope steering wheel, so you can get fairly comfortable up here without much compromise. We're going to go ahead and pop out here, make sure my doors are unlocked, and we're going to come to the back seat because there are some more unique features of the back seat that you won't find in any other midsize pickup truck. First of all, lots of good storage here in the doors. I really like that there are cup holders and cell phone holders right here in the doors. Nice storage there. No real lower storage, so Honda makes up for that with the added storage up here. As we look to the seats themselves, you can see we still get that leather, perforated leather with that contrasting orange stitching. As you fold down the very wide center armrest, you can see two more cup holders, a little bit more storage here. You actually get a pop-up headrest back here in the back, so I like that, how it just kind of retreats and looks flush back here, which is rather nice. Those air vents for that tri-zone air uh, ventilation system back here as well. No USB-C ports back here, but we do get a cigarette-style lighter uh, power outlet back here. We do get map pockets on the back of both front seats for a little bit of extra storage and then we have a 60 40 split bench rear seat you can see the handle right here it says pull handle and you can lift it up and if i can do this one handed clip it into place and now we have a generally wide open load floor because you can see these legs retract uh, they actually go into that channel right there but makes for a lot of storage space inside the cabin here of the honda ridgeline uh, it's the best Underfloor storage in the midsize segment. Second, uh, following it would probably be the non-hybrid Tacomas, followed by maybe the Ford Rangers. But this really is uh, perhaps the best rear seat for comforts because it is nice and wide and has a nice pitch to the back of it. It is a straight up uh, rear seat back in the business. And that 60-40 split with a flat load floor really makes a difference. Climbing in here myself at 510, I've still got decent headroom. There is a cutout here for the sunroof right here in front of me. We do have a power sliding uh, rear opening window right here. We do have top tethers all the way across, but you're gonna have to hit the subscribe button to see us install those child seats uh, for uh, our family review, which drops later. All the way around though, I'm very comfortable here sitting behind myself at 510. This actually isn't where I would sit entirely because uh, I do believe the seat, oh, okay, I lied. Uh, this seat does scoot back for ingress and egress, but no, this is where I sit. It is a stadium style seat, so I am sitting further above uh, where I would normally, or where I was up here. So I, I do have a nice view all the way around me back here. It is rather nice, very spacious, uh, and I do not feel claustrophobic back here whatsoever. And I do really like the air vents, even if they are on the back of the center console, because they are tri-zone. But that is about it for a quick tour of this thing. Yes, I'm in a field. That is about as far as most people are going to off-road these. But let's see how this rides both here in this field and we'll get out on the road. All right, getting in and driving, I did mention we have multiple different drive modes. I'm going to put it in sand just for a little bit of fun. Push the drive select button and we're going to set off here. Again, we're in a field, nothing crazy. Let's see. Yeah, it'll let the tail step out a little bit, but nothing too crazy, not like the Maverick trimmer. Otherwise, we do have an off-road tuned suspension. Let's see how it does over some ruts. And yeah, I mean, this really is built more for people going to a trail 
than maybe blazing a trail. This is called the Trail Sport, not the Trail Boss after all. So it does a good job of actually putting down power. Ooh, I actually tore up the ground a little more than I thought I did <laughs> doing that little maneuver. So it definitely will put the torque down, but otherwise, the only thing that separates this trail sport model from non-trail sport models is the all-terrain tires, those special wheels. We do have an oil pan skid plate underneath, and we get that unique look on the outside, the black accents, the trail sport badging, and all that fun stuff. The four-wheel drive system in this is the same across the entire Ridgeline lineup. So really, you aren't getting too much more with this trail sport model versus any of the other Ridgelines, although I really do like the addition of those all-terrain tires, though tires are a relatively easy upgrade uh, in the grand scheme of things. The other thing I want to talk about on this one is price. I've referenced that Nissan uh, Frontier Pro 4X a couple of times. That severely undercuts this unibody constructed uh, pickup truck by a significant amount. The window sticker on this is just over 55,000, 55,995 to be exact. And that Nissan Frontier was just over 47,000. And I know at least here in the East Texas region, there is a lot of discounts going towards those Nissan Frontier pickup trucks. So price them out in your market, however you see fit. But this is a very comfortable vehicle on the road. This is its real happy place. This is where you don't really make a lot of trade-offs for that pickup truck functionality. Again, 1,500 pounds of payload, 5,000 pounds of towing, make this a competent pickup truck, but when you get it out on the road, you get a nice, comfortable ride. The best ride in the segment, in fact, because it is unibody, because it is essentially a crossover. It is very comfortable in here. The steering is nowhere near as heavy as what we saw in that Nissan Frontier, which makes maneuvering this around very easy. Interesting though, Interestingly though, the turning radius on this seems lacking. I, I don't know if it's the longer wheelbase in this or, or what exactly it is, but I didn't feel like I was really having to kind of multi-point park it as much uh, when we had the Honda Pilot versus this Trail Sport. I feel like uh, it's a multi-point turn to get into our single bay garage door uh, up our uh, 13 degree incline driveway and 90 degree turn to get in the garage. But otherwise it is fairly maneuverable. I will say other pickup trucks I feel are a little bit more maneuverable. The new um, Tacoma being one and the new Canyon Colorado for sure. Otherwise, we do have that naturally aspirated V6 to get us around that does cut itself off when you are in stopping your traffic as I am now. Now I mentioned this econ button earlier when we were doing the tour. Resist the urge to push it. You can see right now I've got a low fuel light, but this econ right here uh, definitely cuts power and makes it a little less fun to drive. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Like it'll still scoot, but it's nowhere near as fun or responsive and definitely makes it feel like a bigger, heavier, slower, sluggish, big pickup truck. Not a fan. I know it saves fuel, but uh, resist the urge to push the econ button. Other things I want to note on this one, visibility. We do have these little windows here. We have blind spot monitors here. We've got very large rear view mirrors. So I feel visibility is fairly good in this. For the majority of the time that we've had this though, Tucker's car seat has been in the middle, really taking up a lot of our rearward visibility out of this. But now with him on the outboard seating position, I feel visibility is actually really good in this. I can see everything around me. It's kind of why you buy a pickup truck in East Texas is you want to sit up, you want to sit higher, you want to be able to see the world around you. And you can do that here in the Ridgeline. Makes it for a very easy uh, viewing of the world around you. And I already talked about the stadium seating uh, in the back seats, kind of setting you above these front seats. 
As far as drivability, maneuvering this in town, I already talked about the steering being so much better than that Nissan Frontier. The power delivery, 280 horsepower, it's okay. The nine speed, it's okay. None of it is great. It, it is showing its age. This platform has been with us for a while. Again, talking to the fact that you can tow up to 5,000 pounds in this. Yes, you can. I have, I have it on good authority from friends who have tried it, that it's not the best experience. But then again, while I was filming this today, or going to film this today, I saw another Ridgeline pulling a fairly substantial single axle camper behind it. So it is all in how you use it and how you plan on using it. There is no integrated trailer brake control on this one. So that is something to take into consideration. Otherwise, for a majority of the people seeking a pickup truck for the bed and the bed only, I'd say this is an excellent buy. Hondas are known for reliability. Take with that what you will. But the size of this pickup truck versus something like a Ford Maverick, which is based on a subcompact crossover, and the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is based on a compact crossover, this being built on a midsize crossover, more room inside, that very usable uh, tailgate bed trunk situation back there makes for a very compelling package in the midsize pickup truck segment. For those of you worried about a turbocharged four-cylinder, naturally aspirated V6 under the hood, simplicity at its finest, and some unique things in this truck that you don't get in the rest of the segment. Independent suspension all the way around, up to 70% of torque distributed to those rear tires in bed trunk back there in the back tri-zone climate control and don't forget that awesome under seat storage back there in the back now i know some of y'all may be upset that i am not taking this to barnwell and i am too myself but when i really dug into the numbers the less than eight inches of ground clearance the less than stellar approach and departure angles i really classify this more as a crossover and as i've said from our raptor video when we took the bronco raptor out there the weather has not been kind to most of the places we test crossovers out there really making it more and more difficult to really justify taking something the two hours there and back uh, just to test it on a few light off-road trails for what most customers in this segment are looking for this is more than competent and with that uh, ivt 4m uh, four-wheel drive system in this sending up to 70 percent of the torque to a single rear wheel if necessary i'd say the off-road chops of this are more than capable for 90 perhaps even more percent of the buyers looking for a pickup truck simply for the bed aspect of it but that is it for my solo review here of this honda ridgeline trail sport if you want to see more from us including our family review hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified every time a new video drops from us Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, in the 2024 Honda Ridgeline Trail Sport, until next time, gearheads, bye.